I'm Steven Edholm and I'm now from skillcult.com, my new website. I've been working on it all week and it should be up soon. Uh, just taking a quick break from that to bring you this cool video on testing tanning materials. So I'm working on this book and uh, basically I'm spoiled. I have tons of oak. This oak behind me is tan oak and it's called that because it's great for tanning hides. I probably have another five species of oak within 10 miles of me right now. And uh, I always just use that stuff because it's easy, but I have been wanting to test all these different materials for a long time and some new ones that I didn't know about that I've been finding out uh, doing research, you know, in old books and stuff. So yeah, this is a cool project. I'm doing it mostly for the tanning book so I can recommend that people experiment with this stuff or not maybe. We'll see how everything turns out. What we're gonna do is just, I'm gonna show you and talk briefly about how I'm preparing the skin samples and then we're gonna dump out some of these materials and take a quick look at them. So this is uh, what I call the tanning tree. It's a big old tan oak here. Here I do all my uh, tanning work. And all these buckets and stuff you see, most of these are experiments. Um, a lot of them are experiments for the book or just stuff I wanted to do and different hides and tanning. This is ground oak bark or chopped oak bark rather. So these buckets here have the skin that I'll probably end up using for these tanning experiments, uh, testing materials. And what these are is from left to right, they're progressively stronger lime solutions for removing the hair and preparing the skin for tanning. So once the hair is ready to slip, I will slip the hair out rinse them repeatedly in fresh water and scrape them over and over again to get all of the lime I can out of the skin. From there, it'll probably end up going into this chicken poop tea and possibly a tea of fermenting grain, like fermented bran or something, all of which is to change the character of the skin by mellowing the grain and it's kind of softening the body of the skin and also getting rid of any residual lime that might be in there. So once that's done, these sections of skin will get cut into small, maybe six by six inch squares, weighed, and then I'll use a certain amount of tanning material to tan each piece of skin uh, so that I can get some idea of the strength of the tanning material. Like if I weigh out a certain amount and it's not enough to tan the skin, then I know it's a weak material. Or if I only use half of the amount I weigh out, it's, it'll be like a strong material. I'm not gonna get really, really solid data, but hey, we are dealing with natural materials here. You can't really get this to an exact science. It's definitely more of an art, but it'll give uh, some information about how strong these materials are and what their characters are. If they make soft leather, stiff leather, uh, colors, um, is the leather harsh or mellow? These are caps from an oak we call gold cap oak or gold cup oak, also known as um, interior live oak. And this is a species native to California. And the thing that interests me is that these have really thick caps. I mean, these are very thick and corky. So there's a lot of material there. Um, I've actually read that uh, an analysis of the tannin content, I think, somewhere, but I can't find it in my notes. But uh, yeah, I think these are going to be really good. I've used them for tanning buckskin before, and they make kind of a nice golden color. Um, these are actually mostly what are called the aborted caps, or we call them the early drop. They're acorns that didn't form properly and then dropped off the tree early. Like kind of the tree rejects them if they're, they're not forming properly. Maybe they're not um, pollinated all the way or they get an insect in them or something like that. But later on when the acorns mature on the tree, I'll also get these bigger caps. I'm sure there's one in here I can show you like this, more mature caps, some of which are very, very large. And this is also interesting because there's a commercial tanning material called Valonia. That's a cool name, Valonia, from the land of Valonia. And um, they were actually collected and traded and sold um, in the tanning trade because they're so good for tanning. So I'm hoping that this will be similar. Pretty excited about that one. These are oak galls from the California Valley Oak or Valley White Oak. It's a very large tree that grows in the valleys and 
some years these things are just super easy to gather in abundance. I mean, I gathered a box full in about 15 minutes the other day. They're very high in tannin. They have tended in the past, in my past experiments, to make brittle leather that's a dark brown color. Um, but I'm going to approach this at a little different this time and see if I can remedy that. This is willow bark and um, it's supposed to make a soft leather. I've never used it before, but it's uh, widely used in Russia, apparently, and highly regarded. This is manzanita leaves. Um, I'm real interested in this one. They're supposed to be really high in tannin. These leaves are a little bit younger than I would have preferred to gather, but they were actually pretty easy to gather and I think could make a good source for some people. Uh, again, in Russia, Manzanita leaves were used, but they used the uh, one that's known as Uva Ursi, which is a very low growing, very low growing shrub with very small leaves. Uh, it must be hard to gather. This is not hard to gather. There's, um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of it around here and it didn't take me that long to get that pile and that's a pretty good pile. This is the oak bark from the same tree as these acorn caps, the interior live oak or gold cup oak. And there's a few other oak barks I don't have yet that I'm hoping to get for testing, like the valley white and black oak. This is also really interesting. This is the paper bark that peels off of madrone trees in the summer. So in the summertime, around when the uh, leaves drop from the, from the uh, evergreen trees, like madrone and the different oaks, tan oak and stuff, this bark peels off in these big papery sheets and just falls on the ground and you can pick it up. It's very lightweight, but I have a feeling it's extremely high in tan and it tastes very bitter when you taste it. So I'm pretty excited to test that out. This is also paper bark that peels off of eucalyptus trees. And there's a lot of different eucalyptus trees. There's quite a few of them that grow in California. Um, I don't know which one this is, but if you went under these trees right now where I got this, you could get a ton of this bark. And uh, you, all you have to do is pick it up. So that's kind of neat. And try that out. Okay, this is interesting. This is rosemary. And somewhere in some tanning book, I read an analysis of rosemary and it had extremely high tannin in the leaves. I had a bush in the garden I wanted to cut back anyway, so I just hacked it back and got this big old pile of rosemary. Another really interesting one here is artichoke leaves. So this is just an obscure reference in a very old book from the 1700s saying that um, artichoke has been used to tan leather and was used to tan book binding leather. So I thought, wow, that's cool. I have plenty of artichokes in the garden. So this is tan oak acorn cups, not real promising because they're so light, you know, um, there's just not a lot of substance here. Each one of these weighs probably a fifth or a sixth, maybe even less um, as one of these nice, you know, heavy, gold cup caps, but I figured I'd do it anyway. We'll see what happens. These are madrone leaves that fall off the tree in the summer when they're mature and the new leaves start growing, the old leaves fall off. This is acacia and there are lots of species of acacia and a lot of them have extremely high tannin content and you know, quite a few of them have been used in tanning in the past. So this is just one, I don't know what species it is. It was growing in my friend's yard and we just cut off a branch and peeled it to uh, test it out. So there's a few more things I want to get, but I think there's about a dozen of them right here alone. So that's a good start. And I think this is going to be real, really interesting. Most of these materials are prepared enough. I might grind a few of them in the blender a little bit more. So I'm just kind of waiting for the skin to get ready to cut up the little pieces. If the next video is what I want it to be, it will be um, actually following, you know, the whole tanning process and all that stuff.